Hey Keith, how's it going? I heard you just graduated, man. Congrats. Yeah, Jackie. Thanks so much, man. How was the party, man? Ah,、uh, you know what? It was great. I I just really enjoyed getting together with all the relatives. Oh yeah, it looks really awesome, man. Yeah, and you know what? It's even it's even really encouraged me to just start praying for them more. Oh, why is that? Well, you know, not many of them are saved, and some of them don't even come out to church. You know, I just I just wish there were some tips that I could use to get them to come out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Actually, come to think of it, I was gonna make a video just for you guys about tips and how to bring your relatives to church. Really? Hey guys, welcome to my channel right here at Once Upon a Church. And today we have a special guest. Today we are watching this video with Keith Siri. So today we gonna give a special collab with Keith Siri in his channel, Broken Sisters TV. So first things first, let them get to know what the church is about. A lot of times people don't know what the church is all about, and time to time they will look at TV and think like, "Oh, is this how it's like?" Boring. Boring. But of course, it's not always like that. It's the 2016 right now. We're living in the new years. It's not like like hundred years ago. But in case the church is like that, I got a little tip for you. Bring them to a social event. Usually, a church has parties during a special events such as Christmas, New Year's, Easter, Halloween. Never mind that. By bringing them to these places first, they have a better idea of how those people can be a really nice people and how fun it is to be at church. Otherwise, you're gonna hear something that's really boring. Back a hundred years ago, my church pastor was not a pastor yet, and he wasn't even Christian yet. He was walking past the church and noticed there was people selling ice cream. Turns out those people were from the church giving out free ice cream, so he decided to join the church. Coincidence? No. And that's how he became a pastor. But enough talking for me. Now it's time to go to Keith. My first tip is invite Jesus into your hearts and homes. My first tip comes from the recording of the story of the Philippian jailer found in Acts chapter 16. In this event, Paul and Silas were miraculously freed from a prison, and the jailer there asked these famous words: "What must I do to be saved?" Verse 31 and 32 tells that Paul and Silas led the jailer and his entire household to Christ. And in verse 33, we read he was baptized that very night, he and his entire household. Do you see what the jailer did in this story? He found the truth of God through Paul and Silas, but what did he do with it? Did he hide it? Did he keep it all to himself? No, he brought it into his household. He took it home. He shared it with his family. And this is what we need to do to lead our relatives not only to Christ but to church. We need to bring Christ's truth into our lives and homes, just like the jailer did. Now, of course, we can't have Paul and Silas over for a family reunion, but we can purposely make sure we are lights for God with our actions and words. We can make sure that the literature and entertainment that is found in our homes is God honoring. We can choose friends that will be good Christian examples to our relatives. These are just a few examples, but hopefully you get the point. We need to invite Jesus into our hearts and homes. Tip number two: introduce him to new friends. Often the things that we do are always influenced by the people we are with. Say, for example, if you have friends that always play games with you. A lot of times, you also play games with them, so that's why you have to introduce a lot of church friends to them—not one, not two, but at least thirty. Jokes. My second tip is embrace your God-given role as a family member. What is the root of your connection with your relatives? Your family, of course. And so, a great way to show extended family how impactful God is in your life is to show what He is doing in your immediate family. In a culture where divorce is common, disrespectful kids are expected, marriage is tainted, parenthood is seen as a burden, and the family is collapsing. There is no better testimony, no better witness, than a family that is growing in Christ together, each embracing their God-given responsibility in their family. Fathers need to embrace Ephesians 5:25 by sacrificially loving their wives. They need to put into action Ephesians 6:4 by training their children in the ways of the Lord. Mothers need to become the woman described in Proverbs 31 verses 25 through 30, being the submissive helpmate to their husbands, aiding him in the raising of their children. A woman that is valued, respected, and praised by all her family. Finally, children need to obey Ephesians 6:1 by obeying, submitting to, and respecting their parents. These are the families that have such a strong bond; it can't help but go noticed by not just their relatives, but everyone. 
back to me. A lot of youngsters these days just love a lot of pop music, uh, a lot of football, a lot of like basketball, a lot of these really con like contemporary things that the world has given us. And the thing is, like Christianity just doesn't seem like it doesn't seem cool. But thank God he has given us such awesome people here, such as Stephen Curry, the awesome like NBA player who plays basketball. I admire him a lot. We also have like Lecrae, an awesome rapper, listen to the songs, it's awesome. The guys I just mentioned, they have a really long story. They use Christ as an anchor. They use Christ as their backbone of their entire lives. And it's just something that really inspires me. So that's a good reason to share with your friends. So my grandma is always that person who loves traditional music and not love anything other than like the, like the 20th century. And like just listening to music just makes her feel happy and again. And like she's not a Christian, but how I would implement it was like getting music from her place, uh, from her century, and actually implement Christian lyrics. So I found like a song that's really traditional Chinese music, and I added some Christian lyrics. And that way, my grandma could actually listen with peace and happy, and also learn stuff about God. Now that's a good way to share the gospel. <coughs> my third point is don't kiss up, love, and remember who you love most. This tip is really the most difficult of all my tips. See, it's great to come up with creative ways to share our faith and to lead our relatives to church. But the truth is, it's likely that there will come a time when we need to just come out and be honest with our relatives. We have to tell them that they are sinners destined for hell, but God's son Jesus Christ died to save them. This can be awkward, uncomfortable, and it may even lead to negative responses. In fact, in Matthew 10, 35, Jesus explains that following him will lead to strife in the family, but it's necessary. See, if we were not to be honest, if we were not to share the truth, that wouldn't be loving our relatives. That'd be kissing up. When you truly love someone, you do what's best for them, whether they like it or not. Furthermore, we have to remember as Christians, we love God above all. And as hard as it may be for some of us to process, that includes our relatives. That's why Jesus follows up in Matthew 10, 37 by saying that if we love our family more than him, we're not worthy of him. To a Christian, it's more important to love and obey God than to kiss up to our relatives. Oh wow, Jackie, those were some really good tips we came up with there. I think I can use them later. Oh man, that's okay. I learned a lot from you too, man. You're great. You know what, man? I gotta go. But I just want to remind you, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Broken Cisterns. Yeah, sure, bro. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, Once Upon a Church, as well. And share them with all your friends and family. Will do, Jackie. And remember, as always, there's something better than those broken cisterns.